Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. My name's Debbie Pow and I'm part of the clergy team at St Mary's Chalcom and St Stephen's Lansdowne. And it's wonderful to be able to welcome you into my home as we celebrate this service of communion together. For the last month, uh, we've been having a, a mini sermon series uh, in our benefice. Uh, Philip and I have preached on topics that you've asked us to. And this Sunday is the last Sunday of that sermon series. And Philip will be preaching for us later on, on the Psalms and David. I mentioned a moment ago, this is a communion service. If you'd like to have some bread and some wine with you for the time when we share together, then you are very welcome. God is both inside and outside of time and space. It's our belief that he meets with us, even though we are physically in different spaces at this time. Of course, if you're not comfortable with that, then do remember that I take communion on behalf of all in our benefice. It's wonderful that there are several people who have contributed to our service today uh, in readings and in intercessions. They've been filmed in a variety of locations and with various background noises. So please uh, don't worry if there's a little bit of background noise in those recordings. Do ignore that. Focus on what they're saying. Our liturgy is available on St Stephen's website and if you haven't got it already then do pause this recording and download it. We'll just take a moment now before we start our service proper. So we meet friends in the name of God whose Father, Son and Holy Spirit Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's begin by praying together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Now God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to be our advocate in heaven to bring us to eternal life and to save us from all that leads us away from God's love. Those things that lead us away from God's love we call our sins. So in a moment of quiet, let's confess those in penitence and faith. So we confess them now, firmly resolved to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. 
So almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven people, let's say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a prayer for today. God of the tearing heaven, whose holiness is unveiled by one who is submerged in all the pain and sin of earth. Give us faith to follow him who goes to the heart of darkness, bearing only the spirit of gentle, insistent peace through Jesus Christ, the promised one. Amen. Our readings this morning are going to be done slightly differently. Our first readings are going to be read during the Gospel and they're going to be read by the Avramenko family. So first we will have uh, our Gospel reading and Hazel is going to read that for us. Hazel here uh, is part of St Mary's uh, now but was formerly part of St Stephen's, so well known to all. Here's Hazel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so Jesus came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, came from, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. Words from one of the Psalms. 
which is very appropriate as we reach the fourth and final week of our mini sermon series where the themes and subjects have been suggested by you from both churches. This week we're looking at the Psalms and David's connection with them. There are 150 Psalms in the Bible and they were written over a period of 500 years from around 1000 BC as poems and worship songs. In our Anglican lection, there are psalms set for every service. You can see it on our board here at St Mary's. Morning prayer, evening prayer, Compline, Holy Communion. And so many of our worship songs and hymns have been based on them. Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. Psalm 96, O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 103, bless the Lord my soul. They are for communal praise, especially at festivals, and some reflect the defining event of the Israelites, the exile, Psalm 137, where the quotation came that I used at the beginning, by the rivers of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. But they're also written for private devotional use, and many think just under half of them were written by King David. And it was the Psalms that gave me when I was at college, I think what was probably my major theological epiphany. And I've been waiting for 14 years to preach on this. I've mentioned it in a few live stream morning prayer services, but now thanks to Linda Fursland, from St Stephen's, we can explore it more fully. At college, we had to write an essay a week, and in my first term, the third essay was on the Psalms and how they were classified. So the usual theological academic suspects were consulted and they classified in terms of form criticism and in terms of context and hermeneutics. But then I read an American theologian called Walter Brueggemann and in a bright flash of intense connection, he introduced the idea that I've held ever since. Within a framework of a sound academic study of the Psalms, he asked the question of them that I always ask in every sermon, so what? The Psalms are written out of human experience and they speak to us in the same way. Times of happiness and unhappiness, of triumph and despair. John Calvin, the great 16th century theologian, said of them, the Psalms are the anatomy of the human soul. The Psalms are the anatomy of the human soul. And so Brueggemann classifies the Psalms in three human states, orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. And I'll look at all, each of those briefly with some ex examples. So orientation means that you know where you're going. Everything is just as it should be, all's well with the world. God is to be praised in the heavens and in all creation. So we'll hear a psalm in this category now. All the psalms in the sermon are read by the Avramenko family. This is part Psalm 8. O Lord our governor, how glorious your name is in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouth of babes at the breast. You might have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of the fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels. 
and crown them with glory and honour. You have given them a dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under feet under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious your name is in all the world. Thank you so much, Abigail. So today, we might sing along with Psalm 8, all things bright and beautiful, or even what a wonderful world. Psalms of orientation are joyful, youthful praise. They are full of light. There is a confident strength, an enjoyment of creation, a wonder, a wisdom, a delight in religious law. Psalm 119, I will meditate on your commandments and follow in all your ways. Wonderful, wonderful. But life isn't always like that, is it? There may be not the right Psalms when you're thrown off balance, for example, when you long for stability and assurance, when you maybe feel that your life is chaos. It's like we're being exiled from ourselves. These are periods of disorientation. Psalm 51 is thought to be written by King David. He lived in a, around 1000 BC. We first hear of him, of course, when he defeats Goliath. Then after Saul dies, he becomes the third king of Israel. As a king, he has an affair with Bathsheba, wife of a leading soldier in King David's army, Uriah the Hittite, and she becomes pregnant. So David plots to have Uriah brought home from the war to his wife so that the pregnancy might be considered his instead of David's. But this fails because of a code of honour, which means that a soldier doesn't have sex during a time of war. So Uriah didn't leave battle, wouldn't leave battle, out of respect for his king, for King David. So as a result, David engineered the murder of Uriah at the hands of the enemy and then takes Bathsheba as his eighth wife. So Psalm 51 is thought to be David's own lament for his wrongdoing. Let's hear it. These are some verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing on your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. You take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Thank you so much, Josh. King David is so human. To sin, to feel remorse, to seek forgiveness. And he is also a key ancestor of Jesus. There are many Psalms of lament, personal and communal. When the Israelites, having lost a battle or been overrun, assume it must be their faithlessness that God is punishing. These are difficult Psalms, raw 
and heartfelt. And who among us hasn't made a plea bargain with God if God will grant a request or hear our prayer or forgive us? There are psalms here of honesty and humility. Today we might sing, Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. And there are many other hymns we sing during Lent or Advent in a similar vein. So orientation and disorientation and finally reorientation. When you've been through it and you come out the other side, you've taken the worst, the darkest, the most painful, the most hopeless, and you've lived to tell the tale. We're now going to hear maybe the most well-known of these psalms of reorientation. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Elaine, thank you so much. These psalms are about deliverance of thanksgiving and a new, real confidence in a faithful God. Psalm 23 is so confident that it recognises that God leads us by still waters, that God makes the cup of our lives overflow with blessing. And these are said in the knowledge also that we walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, God is full of goodness and mercy, but that in spite of the ever presence of evil, of enemies and of death. Today we sing, praise my soul, the King of heaven. Amazing grace, I once was lost, but now am found. The Psalms are the anatomy of the human soul. Praise and wonder and regret <coughs> and remorse and courage and anger and vengeance and confidence and praise. It is also said that the Psalms are the gospel. That three-phase cycle of orientation, disorientation and reorientation, order and chaos and re-emergence, certainly mirror the journey of Christ as he comes into the world as the light, as from the creator, as he suffers at the hands of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried, but then springs again into new life, bearing the marks of death, but with evidence of new life and new hope. And this is a radical message for our world, a world that wants certainty, that often disowns the difficult. Look how death is largely kept away from things in its own place. And it's a radical message for the church too, that freedom to face up to who we are with confidence and how we feel, to own our places of regret and remorse and failure, and to know God's presence through desolation and consolation. And this story is our story still in the rite of baptism. Jesus shows us the way by submitting to John the Baptist and we too follow him as we take ourselves into the waters of baptism, dying to the old life and emerging into the new to hear those wonderful words of God. 
You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. And our baptism, like our Eucharist, is not a one-off event, but something we take with us in each day and in each moment. And as we do, the Psalms are there for us and with us. The Psalms give us permission to be human, to help us to know that God is with us in all that we go through, in all that we are, and in all that we will be. Amen. As we reflect on Philip's words, let us declare our faith in God who journeys with us in our ups and downs in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again in a court and descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Our intercessions are going to be led for us by Ken Bowie from St Stephen's Church. Ken is currently away in France but it's the wonders of the internet that he is with us here now to pray and lead us. Let us pray now to the Lord who loves us, knows our needs and provides for us. As the travelling people of God, we pray for a deepening hunger for the things of God and a loosening of our grip on all the wants and expectations which prevent us from moving forward God's way. Let them and us follow the scriptures written by 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 21 to 25. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow up in his steps. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. <clears throat> By his wounds you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd and the guardian of your souls. Lord, awaken in us the need of you and make us hungry and thirsty for you both as individuals and as the Church of God. Let no other issue sidetrack us from seeking you and increase our love and compassion so that we long to serve you out of love to the world around us. We remember in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. As brothers and sisters with the whole creation, we pray for respect and reverence among people regardless of wealth or status, for responsible sharing of resources and consideration for the natural world of our fragile planet. Guide our leaders in wisdom and integrity and enable us all to cooperate in proper care and stewardship stewardship of the world's resources. Lord, allow our world to see the true value of things so that the worth, worthless and dangerous is unmasked 
and our real needs acknowledged. Lord, as we eat our food this week, remind us of your spiritual healing. We pray for daily bread, we pray for those who are physically starving, for all who hunger emotionally or try to survive on spiritual junk food. For those who mistrust God's feeding, may the meals we prepare and eat together be opportunities for drawing close to one another and to you. We pray also for those who are physically sick and need your healing. We pray especially for those affected by COVID-19 and pray that this pandemic subsides and disappears as all other viruses in the past have, due to your infinite love and healing. We pray for those who have become addicted and long to be set free. We pray for all whose wrong choices have ended in heartache, disillusion and despair and give them your peace and faith in you for healing. May all who are suffering sense your love and comfort and be given strength to persevere. Lord, welcome into eternity all who have spent their lives coming to you and now come to you to be with you forever. Have mercy on all those approaching death who do not know you but reject what they imagine you to be. May they respond to the true and living God and know your love forever. We also pray for those who are in troubled areas of the world. Let your wisdom and peace come through to the peoples and especially their leaders so that they can embrace forgiveness and mercy rather than retaliation and revenge. As we grow increasingly aware of our spiritual hunger, we give thanks for the wonder of your feeding us with spiritual food that satisfies our souls. And we remember Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Peace to you from God, our Creator. Peace from Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Our first hymn this morning, this morning has been chosen by Sue Thomas from Chalcombe. Sue's actually away on holiday and she's joining us from somewhere rather nice and warm. She's chosen for us, O oh Jesus, I have promised.
holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Blessed be God forever. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Ever loving God, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom we have, you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of your Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us, announcing your kingdom is near. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying to us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to, to stand in your presence and to serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people. And gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and this one cup so that we in the company of St Mary, St Stephen and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Being made one in communion with God, let us pray with confidence 
as our Saviour Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, broken for you and for me. The blood of Christ, shed for you and for me. Amen. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And an ancient blessing that would have been known to David and the psalmist. So may the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Our final hymn has been chosen for us this week by Bob Carlton Porter from St Stephen's. Bob is a key player in keeping our buildings and our grounds up together at St Stephen's and he's chosen the hymn Eternal Father Strong to Save, a favourite of his from his naval days. Let's sing together.
before we leave, just a few notices. A reminder that there will be a said even song service tonight at St Stephen's at 5.30. You'll be asked to wear masks, uh, but there are masks at the back of church for anyone who doesn't have one. We're hoping that, or we, we know that those uh, even songs will continue through August at St Stephen's fortnightly. And we're hopeful that in September we will be back to doing morning communions, so said service uh, in our churches. So something for you to look forward to. We are hoping to live stream those services, or at least the ones at St Stephen's where we've got some Wi-Fi. Um, so they w there still will be services available online if you're not able to get there physically. But some exciting news to look forward to. Of course, our churches are open for private prayer. St Stephen's on Wednesdays and Sundays from 9 till 6 and St Mary's on Mondays and Fridays from 5 to 6. Uh, giving, we are so grateful for all of you who give uh, financially to our churches. Without, without the, your giving, we can't operate. Um, we're aware that quite a few people gave physically uh, in physical services and during this time of lockdown they haven't been able to do that and our, our income has dropped so we're no longer covering expenses. If you're able to give or you'd like to give, uh, we'd love to receive from you. St Stephen's has now got an online giving platform uh, give.net which is details available through our website uh, but also through the descriptions below uh, the service here today and St Mary's will have uh, an online giving platform running shortly but it's not quite up there yet so if you are from St Mary's and you'd like to give do get in touch with Philip or myself or Judith Pepler we'd love to hear from you Thank you so much for all that you do give. A reminder that Scruffy Church uh, has having its last episode uh, this evening, as we speak actually. It's gone out at the same time as this service. If you haven't watched Scruffy Church, do watch it. Philip has been doing this for the last 20 weeks and the the programmes are just amazing. They're aimed at children, but they are so accessible for adults too. Uh, if you've got children, the churches in Bath have got together and pulled resources and they're running an online children's club uh, called Unlikely Heroes. And details are on St Stephen's website. If you've got children, you may also have like, uh, like to dip into the new wine uh, children's resources. New one's been going on for the last few days and it finishes tomorrow morning. The, the uh, details of getting for getting in touch uh, went out on an email that I sent out recently and they will also be available on St Stephen's website. All the talks, and there have been some brilliant talks over the last few days on a whole range of subjects from climate change to prayer to social justice to all sorts of things. Um, they are all available on YouTube. Do dip into them, they are fantastic. Uh, tonight, the Archbishop of Canterbury will be speaking after the evening worship. Evening worship starts about eight o'clock and he'll be speaking about half past eight. And at 9.15, I'll be hosting a Zoom chat for anyone who wants to chat anything uh, set up for uh, if anything comes up from new wine but if you just want to, to connect uh, the details again are on the email that i sent out the last couple of days a few days ago and it's also on the uh, st stephen's facebook page morning prayer continues at 8 a.m every morning on facebook and from about 8 on youtube philip will be back on monday Philip will be leading our service next Sunday. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. 
Amen.